All right, let's go out to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and talk to Taylor. What's up, Taylor? Hey, Dr. John. So happy to be talking to you. How are you doing? And also with you, what's happening? (laughs) I recently realized that I'm not showing up in my friendships the way that I want to. Uh And so I'd love some advice about that. (laughs) So how do you you want to be showing up in your friendships? Um, Basically, I... Over the past few years, I've been really, really committed to reducing the anxiety in my life. And your show has helped so much with that. So thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you. But one of the byproducts is that my life looks a lot different than my friends' lives these days. And for whatever reason, over the past year especially, I've found that some of my friends and I have been kind of going in circles in our conversations. And a lot of the focus has been on things that are going on in their lives and in their marriages. And... um. It's not that they're asking me for advice, but when they bring these things to me and I'm looking at it through this new perspective that I have from like following your principles and things I've learned in therapy, a lot of the things that they are talking about feel really solvable to me. And so then I end up getting into like self-development speak and getting into problem solving mode and giving unsolicited advice. (laughs) And And that makes you the worst. No, it does. Cause like I recently had a conversation with a friend and I literally stopped mid conversation and apologized. I'm like, Oh my goodness. I've become that friend. Good for you. Gross. Nobody wants to be that friend. Dude, I don't want to be that friend. I was that guy forever. I hated it oh. about myself. Really? And like right now I'm kind of at a place where I realize that I don't really have a picture of what being a good friend looks like in this context. I love and it. So dude. What a great I question. I would love Thank you. I would love your advice. You got it. Um, How old are you? 31. 31. All right. I'm going to give you some bad news and then we'll get to the good stuff. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Bad news is you're in an age window when there's a natural transition from friends that you've had for 20 years, 30 years, 10 years that are going to slowly fade away. And some of the th- frustration you're feeling, yes, as you're, as you're listening to someone tell the same story about their husband and you're like, why don't you just do this? And all yeah. this stops. And that's part of it. But deeper than that is, oh, this friend I've had that we went to college together, went to university together. We worked together for a long time. We had our first baby together. We've just grown apart. Her and her husband are just couch people. I'm not. She is just a fill-in-the-blank kind of person. I'm not. Some of my best friends in the world, I remember we all had kids. Um, I had a son first. My one buddy had a son first, and the other buddy had a daughter first. Come to find out, one of my best friends in the world is a Cub Scout dad. I didn't know that. (laughs) <laughs> Come to find out, one of my best friends in the world was a Little League baseball draws up plays at work and is like making lineups on his lunch break. What? Right? <laughs> and they came yeah. to find out one of their friends is trying to teach their kid, his kid, like the finer points of why Metallica Black Album is actually better than people <laughs> thought it was, right? And so it's this, <laughs> and, and like why hunting is obsessive, right? So we found that out about ourselves, and there's actually some space. There was actually some time we didn't hang out a lot. Yeah. Because it's like, dude, those aren't my guys anymore. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a, I love Cub Scout. I'm just not a Cub Scout guy. I, I love Little League, but I'm not, dude, I'm not making a lot. Like, when you call me and you're like, hey, who do you think we should pitch in whatever game? I'm like, what? It's Tuesday, right? Um, And they don't think about deer hunting 24-7. So all I have to say is, it just kind of faded. And then our kids got older. Man, we've become great, great friends again, but that doesn't always happen. And so I think you're experiencing both some changes in you and also a natural fading out, which just Mm -hmm. is is something to grieve. It just stinks. I hate it for you. Yeah. And like what makes it really tough is like, I'm thinking of one friendship in particular and it's like, I'm basically all she's got when it comes to friends. Not your your job, not your job, not your job, not your job. It feels like it is. I know. Really heavy sometimes. That's who you are. You're somebody who loves, you're somebody who helps. But it's not your job to be her everything. It's her job to be an adult and to do the work it takes. And it's painful, hard work to gather a tribe. Mm -hmm. Not to pack everything into these big, heavy boxes and then hand them to her friend Taylor and say, you carry this. Yeah. Not your job. Is that fair? 
Yeah. So a couple of things that I had to implement in my life to change my life. And I'm not perfect at it, but I've gotten way better. And dude, I've got a litany of people that we could call right now and be like, was John super annoying about like diet, nutrition and counseling? And is he always lecturing people at parties? Like, and they'd be like, yep, we love him, but yep. And so here's a couple of my rules. I don't yeah. answer questions I'm not asked. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I do say out loud, are you asking for my help here? Or are you just telling me? And mm -hmm. sometimes people feel that as off-putting. But I want to make sure. Like it <laughs> well, it's it's you do, but they often don't. Mm -hmm. I've had to learn to say to myself as a mantra, as a thing I repeat: "John, speak less. John, speak less. John, speak less." And it's just become part of my vernacular now. It's an internal dialogue. John, talk less. What I came to find through counseling and through working on shutting my mouth was a scary thing. And that was this. I felt wholly inadequate just showing up and being a friend. And I felt like the only value I brought to anybody at any time was having a bunch of answers about stuff. And what that did in a roundabout way was suggest that I'm smarter than all the people I interact with. They're kind of dumb. I can probably teach them about how to be married better, eat better, exercise better, deal with things better. and it really was my ego trying to protect me. And what I had to make peace with is the greatest gift I can give my friends is my presence, just showing up. Hmm. And that meant I'd look in the mirror and start convincing myself through action, not just through mantras, but that I'm worth being a friend with. And that was the, my core root. That may not be yours, but that was mine. I just didn't, at the end of the day, believe I had much to offer anybody. So I'll ask you, are you worth being a friend with? I think so, but I don't always feel so. Right, there you go. You know so, <laughs> yeah. but you don't feel it. That's that's mm -hmm. awesome. You, you know why? Because that means you're going to practice. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying something, you're going to reach across the table and just hold your girlfriend's hand. Instead of saying anything, you're going to tip the waitress really well and look at your friend and say, I just felt like I need to do something nice for somebody. <laughs> We're just going to practice. And you're going to have some friends fade away. Yeah. You might have one or two friends that notice and say, hey, you don't talk as much anymore or you're not like whatever, you, you're, you've changed. And you can say, yeah, I was really annoying. I feel like I was lecturing you guys all the time and that's not my job. Y'all are grownups. Y'all are smart. And letting things kind of be. And you know what that is at the end of the day? Hmm. A non-anxious life. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to control. I'm not going to control all these variables and all these other people's lives. It's not my job. Not my job. And if you ask me, <laughs> buckle up, I'll tell you. Right? I'm not uh -huh. just going to like lose my personality. I'm not going to lose my opinions on things. But I have found the more I'm quiet, the more people do ask, hey man, what do you think about this? Somebody who I never in a million years would have would have thought called me recently and said, hey man, I'm getting a weight bench and I need a workout program. Help me out. And I, I was flabbergasted. And then I took I took 24 hours to respond or maybe a day or two and his wife <laughs> reached out to me and was like, it's closer than he's ever been to actually exercising. Will you return the call? And I was like, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> right? But this is somebody I've hassled for, for 20 years. And I finally just shut up because I love the guy and I know he loves me and he doesn't love me because I have all the information on the right way to do a bicep curl or whatever. Hmm. He loves me because he's my friend and we show, we've shown up for each other for almost a quarter century. And then eventually that call came. Is that fair? Sure is. You don't like it though, That's huh? Starting. No, I do. No, I do. I really do. <laughs> All right. I've talked a lot and thrown a lot at you. Tell me what you're feeling, what you're thinking. I'm thinking, I really like the fact that I now have a step one. 
But now I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I'm probably going to have to start being more intentional with building friendships. And that scares me so much because <laughs> it's the worst. Truly, truly, I really do feel like what on earth? Why would somebody want to be my friend? I don't know. I'm weird. I see stupid things. I have weird interests, man. Like, I want all the sea monsters to be real. That's the kind of person I am. And oh, I would like, love that. Who wants to be friends with that person? But Dude, the first time I, I went deer hunting, I had to put it in the back of my Prius. I love weird. It's awesome. <laughs> And I was wearing Converse All Stars because I didn't know. Hey, it's part. I, it just is. It just is. Right? It just yeah. is. My son recently asked me, Dad, how do you know all the Pantera lyrics and Taylor Swift and John Mayer? How, how do you? I was like, Man, listen, you just gotta. So, hey, being weird <laughs> is the gift you bring somebody who lives in spreadsheets all day, who thinks rationally about problems, who has never even once considered a sea monster. That's a great conversation <laughs> over drinks and nachos. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's a gift, but you have to believe you're worth you're worth that gift, and that's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and if right, your too. core identity is everybody's okay around me, that's going to be exhausting. That's a recipe for an anxious life. Mm-hmm. If your core identity becomes, I'm just gonna be me and I'm always gonna show up and I'm always gonna care for people and I'm not gonna answer questions unless I'm asked unless there's a truck coming towards somebody and I'm gonna intervene and I'm gonna clarify man that sounds really tough are you asking for my advice or you just want me to listen I'm just gonna keep showing up keep showing up and keep showing up because the world needs a little more weird it doesn't need any more crazy. We're capped out on that. It doesn't need any more mean or angry. We are full up on that. But a little more weird, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Thank you so much for the call, Taylor. You are awesome. 